Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookandme.com and me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and then on Facebook um, under me Crafty Scrapper Creates. That's my business page over there. Um, I am wanting to show you a journal that I was given and uh, then show you the starts of a journal I am beginning. Um, I've had a custom order for a journal and um, I love this one that Miss Paula made for me so much that I'm going to kind of mimic a few things um, on the other journal that I'm making and I'll show you that in just a minute, the starts of that and um, we'll try to get the signature together, the binding together, stuff like that and then we'll probably do the decorating of the pages in another video, although the person that has ordered this from me is wanting some, um, she's, she's wanting it more like a shabby chic, um, type of journal and not, um, as vintagey as I usually make journals. And that's totally fine. Everybody has their own, um, likes and dislikes and the ways that they want their journal. And she's wanting it. Um, her way and I am totally good with that because um, she's she's the one it's being made for that's what she likes so everybody has their own tastes and I'm wanting to make it according to how she likes it so there won't be that much distressing in the one that I'm making I'll show you that in just a second and she wants uh, lots of white pages for writing because she is going to truly use this journal as a journal should be used and that is to journal in. Now I know some people like to put pictures and scrapbook in their journal. That's great. If you want to do that with your journal, that's wonderful. Um, if um, you make your journal to put memorabilia in, great. That is totally wonderful that that's how you use a journal. But for her, she's wanting it uh, as a writing journal, uh, basically. So um, we won't have too much decorating to do. But of course, you know me. I can't not decorate a journal that I'm custom making for somebody. So we'll get to that in just a moment. This is from Miss um, Paula Probus. And we were with her at her and her husband's um, church where they pastor in uh, Kentucky over the weekend. And um, she surprised me right before we left to come up and gave me this. And I was so excited about it. I'm trying to get her note out of here. And I want to make sure not to rip anything. There we go. So it's a nice little uh, glassine bag on the outside of a um, brown paper bag, craft bag. And she's got a little collage piece there and has a note down in it. And then her packing material is this beautiful coffee stained um, like craft wrapping that she personally coffee stained. So I'll be using that in a future project, I'm sure. And here is the journal. Is that not gorgeous? It's totally gorgeous. And let's go ahead and start reading. Now, some of this I might not want to share with y'all, so I'm just going to kind of um, breeze through it real quick, and then we'll see if um, all of it is something that I... <laughs> I can share with you. So, uh, hi, Melina. At first, I wasn't sure if I should give you this journal because you and your mom make so many pretty journals yourself. I started making journals in 2021 after I found your YouTube videos. So, um, I'm just saying, I don't make that many hardcover journals. And uh, your journal far surpasses anything I've ever made. This is gorgeous. I love it, Paula, so you don't give yourself enough credit. Uh, I have given away several several journals. She talked to me about this, uh, and it seems as I make them, they take on their own personality. So, I feel this journal is for you. As I finished this journal, I prayed over it. I am sure you understand what I mean. Yes, I do. The thought come to me to pray for the Pilot Family girls. Look at there, y'all. 
Uh, the girls on the front represent you guys. So this journal call is called The Girls. She names all of her journals, and this one is called The Girls. Uh, I pray for God's traveling mercies on you and your family. It is a blessing to have met you all. Blessings for you all abundantly. Thanks for your inspiration, Paula Probus. I love that, Paula. Thank you so much. And like I said, you don't give yourself enough credit because this is gorgeous look okay first off look y'all it's a three signature journal it is a hard cover and she said that this is an old reader's digest book so the outside that's what it is and like i said i don't make that many hardcover journals most all of mine are soft cover so this is going to be um you know something for me a little challenge for me because i'm going to um, use an old vintage book as my cover for this custom one that i'm making so there you go three signatures the girls are on the front and it's a tag on top of the reader's digest cover and then it looks like she has expanded the spine probably with a piece of cardboard or something and then covered it with this beautiful lace trim and then there's her bindings there for the three signatures my lighting's all crazy bright today and then here's the back so more of that um, beautiful lace trim coming over on the back side of it so pretty and then on the outsides here before i open it up look here she has tabs and then on the tab she has those bulb clips with little um gems on them so pretty love that she has three of those and then she has uh twine and stuff sticking out from the top so that's just gorgeous and then she said that there are some things in here that she got from us as far as uh, M Scrap Busters and things like that that me and mom uh, do. So this is uh, a library pocket and it says East Harden Library in Glendale, Kentucky. And then there is the library card in there. I love that. I love that and I'm assuming this is the original library pocket and card that was in the book if it is I'm that just makes it even better for me I love that so we've got some washi tape here and here is the front of um, the first signature and I see a little something that looks very familiar to me a little wrap around pocket here so cute and it's clipped on with one of the tiny little Tim Holtz clips love that she's got a top tuck here so pretty uh, then this little tuck pocket here that is adorable and look it's got a little booklet little mini journal in that pocket look at that lace trim how pretty that's gorgeous and that music paper is gorgeous that is so me even though I really don't have that much music paper um, so pretty look at that tuck so we've got something here and something here so it holds your papers sideways or you can put it in straight up and down that's a neat idea right there I like that okay and then a little um, Oh, this is a dolly pocket, it looks like, or it is a dolly, um, something made from a dolly, but you could actually uh, leave that dolly on the inside open too, but dollies are very delicate, so I like how she's done this. It's all glued down, and then she has it like a little bouquet. Too cute. I love that torn edge inked. That's very, very pretty just a note and then here is another pocket look at <laughs> look at that how cute i love it and ledger paper that looks very familiar i use ledger paper in most every one of my journals and then these journaling cards are gorgeous so pretty 
and that little tuck at the bottom she made in that ledger paper. And then, oh, a flip up. Too cute. Love that. That is um, some Tim Holtz wallpaper. Love that. Beautiful inked and dyed papers. I love that tag. And it's a nice thick tag. It's not something that's going to um, get real flimsy on you when you're putting it in and out of pocket. So that's a great idea. Love this, Paula. Beautiful little tab on this half page that is the center of this first signature. Look how gorgeous that is. Love that decoration. Beautiful pages in this book, Paula. Love that. Another ledger page with a pocket. And then she's got an envelope clipped here at the top. And it does open up. And then it has folded part on the back with a journal card there. Beautiful. And then, if I can get it back on there, my fumble fingers, there we go. Got another little half page there. Beautiful. The back side of that um, music paper with some more lace trim on the edge there. Another top tuck. And that is some beautiful papers. Love that. That looks very familiar to me. I think that came in one of the kits. But it's very pretty. Either way, look at that nice collage she's got there. Gorgeous. So there is that first signature. Then this starts the second signature. Okay, so each one of the signatures has one of those tab uh, tabs <laughs> with the bulb clip on them. Nice. I love that. So we got a little tuck there with a lighthouse. Gorgeous. And then top tuck there with some more of that Tim Holtz wallpaper. So pretty. A little uh, pocket with a tiny little micro mini journal. Beautiful. I love that. So cute. Ledger paper. Pocket on the back of that with a tab and a puffy butterfly sticker. That's cute. Look at that. Nice little side pocket there with a tag. And then, oh, this looks very familiar. It is a scrap paper notepad. Love that. And then we've got a torn side tuck here, it looks like, with a tag in there. Beautiful. I love that paper. Uh, another little tuck there with a nice collage. That's a book page tuck. That's beautiful. The little birds sing the sweetest songs. <laughs> Littlest birds. Love that. Little tuck there. Beautiful. With some more of that paper and music page and beautiful lace trim. Up, oh, look, a fold up. So cute. I like that. And then the middle of this signature, it's got a tuck there. Oh, and look, a little tuck here. So pretty. I know I've probably missed something through all of this, but just trying to show you everything. Look at that. So it's kind of like a tag behind it with the um, policy closure. And then on the inside, you have postcard journaling space there love that it's got a little charm at the top this is a tag and then it's clipped onto the top with that bulldog clip oh I love that very cute Paul I think I will have to make one of these for that journal I'm about to start so let me get it back around this eyelet that is cute. I love that. 
And like I said, it's just clipped on with the bulldog clip. So that gives you a little extra something at the top when you're looking at the journal clothes too. Cute. This is beautiful. A little tuck there. That's so pretty, that lace trim. It's gorgeous. I love that trim too. I love the little dog. I wonder if that come out of this Reader's Digest, this artwork. Very, very cute. Okay. And then we've got this clipped in to this pocket here. Uh, we have another envelope clipped on. So pretty. And it is a um, uh, book page envelope. Very, very nice. I love that. There on the back of that ledger paper, we've got a top tuck there. And then, oh, that's a cute tuck. So it's a circle that she cut out and inked, and then she just flipped up the bottom section of the circle and made it a little tuck space. That's cute. I like that. And then we have another circle there in this top tuck. Another top tuck. Oh, that was the back of that second signature. Now we're going to the third signature. Got some great ad, vintage ad ephemera there for this top tuck. And another tab there with the bulb clip and the little gems on it. Beautiful. That card is so pretty. Love that top tuck. And then we've got a little side tuck here. And, ooh, this is an acetate tuck on this music paper. So if you can see that, see that shine, there's the acetate. I love that. That's very, very pretty. I like how that looks. Love that twine on those two. Here's another envelope. And it is clipped in very pretty and then you've got some tickets back up oh, those tickets look familiar too <laughs> we had those in the shop not too long ago I love those and clip that back on there and then we have a ledger pocket here oh that is beautiful oh that's got napkin on it so pretty Love it. Uh, another, is this another tuck? Or is that a collage? Yep, that's a collage. Very pretty. I like that. Then we have a book page tuck with that. Look at that little ephemera holder. That is darling. I love this, Paula. I love looking through journals, period. That is so pretty. Love that little doggy pocket. And look at the center of this one. That is pretty. I love how she's um, deckled or scalloped the edges of that with some beautiful washi tape in the center. That's some gorgeous inked paper too. And then, is this a tuck? No, nope. dolly. So this is a nice collage on book page. Very, very pretty. And then the back side is a dolly tuck. So there's the dolly. And then she's got it where you can tuck it in. And she's put just a little bit of reinforcement there. So that whatever you tuck in gets held really well. Gorgeous. A ledger pocket with beautiful papers in it. Another little mini pocket. I love that. I love pockets anyway. And that beautiful, beautiful, and I've said beautiful like 4,000 times already. Um, music paper with some trim, lace trim. That's pretty. And we've got a top tuck there with a nice journal card in it and plenty of space to write. And then we've got the end of our third 
um, signature and then there is a torn or um, kind of decorative pocket there with a tag and then here's the back cover back inside cover and that's a bag a craft bag with some pattern on it and it is a writing board so she's put a writing board in there in the back so um, when I am writing on whatever page so let's go to this page here and I can put this back behind here take this out right on that and I've got a nice sturdy surface there oh I love that great job with this Paula it is gorgeous I love it love it love it very pretty and I love that that writing board slides down in the bag in the back so that is um, the journal that Paula gave me over the weekend when we were there on our ministry trip and I appreciate it so much it's gorgeous and I am going to like I said mimic just a little bit I'm not gonna put three signatures in this one it's just gonna have one signature in it um, Paul is very brave I hardly ever do three signature or more than one signature um, signatures get a little tricky when you start putting in more than one it does for me anyway so um, this is gorgeous and I love how she's assembled it I'm gonna just do one signature in this journal that I'm working on though and for my spine I had taken out all of it had a floating spine in it the original book floating spine and I took out that floating spine and took out all the pages out of it so then we just had this really thin piece of um, vinyl or whatever on this back side so I put some bag paper and then some fabric on with some fabric glue and here is the little sped up version of how I did this So that's how I did that and then I just frayed the top and frayed the bottom I'm gonna pull y'all out just a little bit I had you really really close so that you could see all of the um, stuff for that journal so now I'm gonna pull you out just a little bit so everybody can see now I just frayed the bottom and frayed the top and I don't have these sides glued down all the way yet because I'm gonna put some paper in to cover up this um, inside of this book where it's kind of torn and frayed so see I don't have it all glued down all the way yet and then that's my measurements that I'm going to cut some cardstock to cover the insides here and I'm just going to do plain like a mossy green cardstock and like it says on both sides I'm going to cut it at eight and a quarter by four and a half you'll just have to figure out um, what size you need for the book cover that you're using now on the other side I'm going to cover this also with another piece of that same fabric and this fabric comes to me from a friend named Tammy Miner she's a local friend that is a seamstress she makes some of the most gorgeous things ever and um, she just recently made me uh, a new pouch to put in my bag in my purse she made me um, let's see what was the other thing um, a Bible and um, Bible journal carrier 
So, you know the um, Bible covers with the handles that you can get at Christian bookstores and things like that. I asked her if she could make me a zipper pouch for my Bible and my um, Bible journal that like sermon notes that I take with me to church and it have handles and a zipper and maybe a couple of inside pockets and she did it buddy did she do it and it's a beautiful Paris theme um, when I remember I will get that into my craft room <laughs> and I'll show y'all that but Anyway, I asked her if she had any fabric scraps that I wanted them. And then I told her what that, what I would be using them for. And she said, oh yeah, I will have you a whole bag full. So when I picked up my latest uh, things from her, she had me an entire like department store bag full to running over. I mean, it was bulging. <clears throat> and this was some of that um, fabric out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this spine on this side also with this fabric. And um, that's going to give me enough of uh, reinforcement. So I've got the what was left from the book. And then I have that um, bag, that paper bag piece. And then I have fabric on there. And then I'll have fabric on this side. So when I go to make my holes for my binding, it's going to have plenty of reinforcement there. And uh, I'm going to glue this down also. I'm going to leave it flat like this. I'm going to put my Fabra Fix especially down into the creases there, the all the way across, and then back up this way and then all the way across and get that original spine covered up and I'm not going to go all the way out right now because I don't know exactly how I want to decorate the front and back so I'm just getting this on the that middle spine part and I tried to cut this piece as tall as this piece because I want to fray it also. So I want to get that as straight as possible too. So let's kind of line it up on our um, mat here and then get this laid down. Now I'm going to look at it this way to make sure that looks pretty good and it does. So, when that dries completely, I'm going to get my bone folder wherever I laid it. And I'm going to make sure that that's down good. Well, I just had it in my hands right before I started this video. There it is. I just got to look better, huh? I'm going to get that really smoosh down y'all like that word in there and then I'm going to turn it this way close it and just kind of make sure that the edges <clears throat> meet up and this side needs to come forward a little bit this way before everything dries let's get that moved forward and then close it again and see there we go we're matched up better that way now i'm going to leave this flat and let it dry once i get happy with how it looks there we go I like that uh, i'm going to leave this flat and let that dry and then I'm going to come back and fray this material more on the edges here and then on the top and I'm thinking uh, since we're going shabby chic that there should be some polka dots in here somewhere so I really really love how that looks and she loves greens so I think that really looks good but I don't have enough unless I find another piece up in my scrap pile. And I don't think so. This is an older piece of scrap. 
so I don't think I'm going to have quite enough to use the whole the whole this whole strip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure where I need to trim this and then I'm going to cut this in half long ways like let me get this make sure that I got enough I don't want to cut it too short and then this is approximately one and a half inches so I'm going to go to the three fourths here and get me two strips there we go and then I can flanagle this somehow, you know, and get me a little bit of polka dots poking out from both sides. And I think that's so cute. And then I could do like Paula has done here. See how she has this little black strip here showing. So on mine, it would be this little polka dot strip showing and then I could do a tag of some kind uh, that's almost the length of it on the front for the front cover I like that so that's what I'll be using once all of this is dry and I have frayed those um, edges so then I'm going to flip this over as long as it's flat I think we'll be fine there on the back and I'm going to cut this mossy green paper eight and a quarter by four and a half. So I need to pull out my arm here and go to eight and a quarter for my length. Hmm, let's do it this way. We're gonna waste a whole lot less if we go here and do eight and a quarter. So then we've got our height and now we just need our width which is four and a half and we can get both pieces out of this one sheet of paper okay close that up and then slide this in just to make sure that we've got it how we want it and that's pretty I like that and pull this over a little bit yep I love that and then once we get this glued down then we can glue this down also so for this like I said I'm not going to do a lot of distressing but I do think that I could do a little bit of green around the edges of it not the peeled paint that's going to get too bright let's do this forest moss let's just do it on one side we'll see how it looks and then if we're like lit that's just horrible then we can just flip it over and not worry about it okay let me look here forest moss I think that's good it's just barely a little bit and um, we can still st stay shabby chic with this and not go too vintage so I will do the outside edges and then the top and the bottom and that just gives a little bit of a worn shabby chic look but I really truly think the polka dots on the front are going to give us um, the look we're wanting to that shabby chic look because you know when I think of polka when I think of polka dot when I think of shabby chic I think polka dots I think lace um, I think creams and you know really I think pinks but now she didn't mention anything about pinks, um, you know, wanting pinks. Now she did mention coral, the color coral and teals. But um, she likes like the sea foamy 
green, mossy green color, sage green. So I think this is a perfect little mix for her. And we might add a few little um, coral bits through it too. Um, little accents of coral through it. I think that would be very cute. So um, I'm going to glue these down. Uh, I'm just going to use some, um, hmm, yep, just like art glitter or barely arts, whatever liquid glue you've got. I'm just going to glue it down with that. And uh, then I'm going to turn it over and fray that fabric really good. Put on my polka dots. And I think... Let's see, I'm going to do the green just a little bit on the inside. That would be up underneath that up top. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of this polka dot paper too in that forest moss. Oh, I really like that. But I'm just barely doing the edge. Melina, don't get too grungy here. Just barely do the edge, sister. And we'll put that on the front. I want this to go on the outside there. So do that. But we'll put this on the front underneath that fabric after I fray it. And um, we'll get this glued down and then get the rest of that fabric glued down. Just barely get the edges, Melina. Don't grunge it up too much. Okay, so there's that inked. This is inked. So we're ready for fraying and gluing down. All right, so I have the outside done, glued down with the polka dot paper that I told you about that I wanted to put on there. Then I have this glued down on the inside here. I have my signature, the pages cut um, and folded like I want them. In the order that I want them, I'm going to hold it together with a little bit of a clip here so that I can just show you, flip through this. This is some cream colored cardstock, and then I have a, like a darker cream uh, paper, just paperweight. And then this is some regular 32 pound, well it's the premium card um, copy paper. And then I just threw in a couple of pieces of my food color dyed um, pages. And this is that green color. And then there's some more of that cream paper. And then I've got some dot grid paper in here because she needed um, quite a bit of just regular journaling pages. So white grid paper. And then there's some of that corally pink color in the food dyed papers that I made. More of the beige. Uh, premium copy paper. More of that green. Uh, then the beige again. I've got some dot grid here. And then that beige again. Regular premium beige. Then I've got uh, premium again. And then another one of those corally pinks, and they've got some, it's got some green in it too. But I got some of the tamer <laughs> pieces because she's not really wanting the grungy vintage look. She's wanting more shabby chic. So I did get some of the more tame looking ones that had been dyed. There's some more dot grid paper, copy paper. And then this is the center, and it's cut a little shorter, and it's another piece of this cream cardstock that I'll put pockets on, and that'll be where the binding goes, and then that's the other pages back through there on the other side. So we've got a total of like 40 sheets uh, of writing surface, and... Um, that is just, um, you know, it's like 20 sheets all together, 21 sheets probably, because I didn't count the middle. So 21 sheets, and then we've got front and back of every one of them too. So you're looking at 80 uh, sheets to actually write on um, in this one, front and back, okay? So she is wanting a writing journal, so we're not gonna do that much 
as far as grungy or uh, decorative or anything like that on the pages themselves. But we can decorate the covers um, front and back. So this is what this cover is going to look like. I've got the fringy stuff at the top. I've got the fringy stuff at the bottom. So that's a nice little accent to the book. But I really love how it's all coming together already. And what I'm wanting to do, now I might not have one, so I might have to make one from scratch. But what I'm wanting to do is try to find a tag from my M Scrap Busters that will go on the front here, a larger tag. And then maybe find some pockets that I've already made in M Scrap Busters to go on the inside here too. Um, but we might have to make, you know, library pocket kind of inserts for this. And for the binding, I'm just going to do the three hole binding like you've seen me do in so many other um, journaling videos. So that's what I'm going to do to get that put in there. For the closure on this, I want to go ahead and make those closure spots because I am going to do it like I did that um, one of those last journals that I made. I'm going to do my eyelet on front and back and um, I'm going to close it up with some lace. So let's find some lace trim and I really like this. It's not too dark. It's more of a white but she likes cream so I think that is um, a beautiful color and I think what I'm going to do is use this lace and then also some of this baker's twine and I'm going to let me get the end of it here this is the baker's twine with that gold flick in it and what I will do is have a pull on the front of lace and baker's twine together and then a pull on the back of lace and baker's twine together too. So I need to measure this out to get my closure on the front and back. So I want to go ahead and do, um, I'm going to do approximately 16 inches of lace for the front and back closure. So let's go ahead and cut that a little bit of an angle at 16 inches and then hopefully we have enough of this baker's twine that I can do the same thing. So let's see here. There. Yep. I'm going to have enough I do believe. There's 16 of that. And that's just always been kind of like my magic number as far as uh, closures for a journal 16 inches um, as far as the way I'm going to do this closure anyway so y'all know y'all heard me say it so many times um, I'm going to create library knots and so that's just like the knot that you make when you make a bookmark that's my library knot um, and now I need to pick out what eyelets I want. So I know I'm not going to go with white. It just doesn't go with what we're doing here. Uh, copper, of course, will not go either. Um, this shiny is not really, I mean, I like it, but not really keen on that either. This is like a gunmetal color and I really like that. Um, I don't think the gray is going to go but then this I like that too. So now I just got to figure out do I want that? Do I want, ooh, wait a minute. I got bronze out too. So I've got a gunmetal, I've got a gray matte finish and then I've got that bronze and I do believe the bronze is going to win out y'all. I really like how that looks. This, that's them all together. I think that's too dark. 
and let's just go put that one up but I like that too but it is matte I don't know one more time okay yep let's just go with that one <laughs> Uh, I'm all about um, variety, but I do like that. It's kind of like a kind of sea foamy, really, really light sea foamy gray, if that's even something that exists. And now I need to get out my crocodile and I need to measure here, get my pencil. And we're looking at right at eight and a half inches tall. So I want to go eight and a quarter, I mean four and a quarter, sorry. Four and a quarter. And I want to come back to about here. And that is almost an inch. Let's go three fourths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over on the back side. And measure the same thing. Come in at four and a quarter and come back about three fourths of an inch. And just make sure, yep, we're good. We're good, good, good. And I'm going to go with the, hmm, do I need to go with the big? bigger hole or the small I'm just gonna go with the smaller hole let's go for it don't question it Melina just do it okay so I'm gonna get this very close to me so I can see it very well I'm gonna pop that hole there and then turn it over and find my dot of my pencil mark And make my holes in my book cover itself. We want to do that first and we want to set our eyelets first so that way when we are coming in here and making pockets we um, don't get in over that and we don't have to you know mess that up so we'll have to work around that. Okay I went ahead and done the bigger hole on my crocodile just to make sure that it worked and then I'm going to put these eyelets in here and I've got room there so the eyelet is not going over my book cover and now I will set my eyelet with my crocodile Okay, I'm going to turn it over. That looks beautiful. I'm going to come over on this side and do the same thing. Okay, pretty stuff. Okay, and then this way it also, when you're decorating the front, you know we're not going to go um, too far over on this side here because you don't want to mess up the hole you have made or get in too close to that eyelet. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to put my loose ends together of my Baker's twine and my lace and then I'm going to go through my hole up top like this and then I will probably need something to poke it through just so it'll come all the way through here let's get one of our stylist poke that through like that and then get a good loop of both trims and then pull that nice and tight and then if you've got two trims you'll have to pull both individually also 
So there's our front pull. Okay, and then for the back, line these trims up. You've got 16 inches of both, so they should line up pretty good. And then same thing this way. I'll start it there, get my stylist to poke it the rest of the way through. And once I've got it started, should be able to pull it pretty easily, which the baker's twine is all that's wanting to come through there. Okay, then you're going to, if you've pulled something through too much, you'll line it all up together. So I need to pull the ends of my baker's twine this way. Get them lined up pretty good like that. Then pull everything through and then pull baker's twine individually and then pull lace individually. So then when we get this signature put in, I'm just going to lay this in like this for right now. We get that put in and we fill it up just a little bit. Then we will have this closure. This is like my favorite closure ever and I love just wrapping lace around or some kind of trim around too. But this is probably one of my favorite closures of all times. It's sturdy. It works well. So then you've got that nice little closure there. You can make it longer if you want to. Um, it, if you make it too much longer than 16 inches, usually you're going to have, you're going to run into, um, uh, if you travel with it a lot, it's going to get caught up on stuff. So even if this journal grows a little bit, I've still got enough ribbon to tie a nice bow if I want to. Even if that journal gets a little more fat and Pac-Man mouth, I've got still enough there. Okay, so that is our closure and our cover assembly. So in the next video, Oh yeah, and then I showed you how I'm going to do the signature too. Our next video, we're going to get the signature sewn in. We're going to put in our pockets, our front decoration, decorate a little bit on the pages, and then this journal is going to be ready for its recipient. And like I said, this is a custom ordered journal that I'm working on, and I'm very happy with how it is coming together, and I hope that she loves it. Um, until next time, when we finish this journal, y'all have a great day. Thank you again, Paula, for this beautiful journal. I love it so much. And you are giving me some inspiration. You thanked me and mom for inspiration. You are giving me inspiration for, um, finishing my next journal. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye y'all.